Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's Independent Media Production. Today, we are tackling a enormously important topic. It is finding your sound. What does that mean and why you're probably going about it wrong? Wrong is a tricky word when we talk about activities around the drum set. We spend a lot of time talking about how there's no wrong way to do anything and that everything's inbounds and we should be explorers. However, the conversation around this idea of finding your sound or being told that this is something we need to be obsessing over by the industry and by other players and the internet at large, it's leading us down a challenging, frustrating, and maybe completely wrong path. First thing we need to address is that However you sound on a given day is your sound. Let's set aside the idea that your sound is somewhere down a path and that you are running towards this and you're gonna someday have it and then you're gonna have your sound. Instead, let's address the idea that every single time we sit down, we are in a process of evolution and addressing issues in our playing that is getting our sound a sense of progress, growth towards something that makes us happier than yesterday, and we do this every day, getting towards something that is going to make us satisfied and feel like we're expressing ourselves to our fullest. Now, having said that, we do need to talk about what this means in terms of the instrument, in terms of how we address playing the instrument, and how we can get some evolution into the sound that we already have. First things first, Tuning changes how we sound. The heads we choose changes how we sound. All of the gear that we choose changes how we are generating sound. But at the end of the day, wherever you go, there you are, no matter what set of drums it is, and your sound is in you first and foremost. Once we know this, we can then start to make intelligent decisions about tuning and tone and head choices and everything else that goes into it that facilitates the sound that we want to hear, but with the recognition that we are the thing making that sound and this is facilitating our expression. Many of us, maybe most of us, have heard some kind of euphemism around a big name drummer that we love that goes something like this. No matter what gear they sit down at, they always sound like themselves and they can make any gear sound good. What this really means is that they have the technical capacity, the experience, the touch, all of that to assess the gear that they're given, make little adjustments if there's time, and execute a great performance on whatever that stuff is without that gear and that room and everything else becoming a hurdle that inhibits them being able to perform well. This doesn't mean that insert name drummer here, wouldn't rather have their preferred gear on that day. It's not about that. If they're sitting down to B8 cymbals or sitting down to something that's way nicer than they're used to, that's not what we're talking about. Everyone would like to have their favorite stuff, but when you get handed something like this, no different than a car that's not that great when you're renting a car or uh, maybe a meal that's not exactly what you were looking for, how do you relate to, adapt to, and utilize what you're given hopefully to get the job done and maybe make sure that nobody else on stage knows that it wasn't optimal. This means for us as musicians that we are less looking for an end and looking more toward means to an end. And in this case, that means how do we adapt ourselves to get the sound that we're looking for? And that can include changing out the heads or making adjustments to the kit, whatever it might be. But we're always in a mode of evolution and adaptation to what we are surrounded with. This even means that perhaps you're using maybe calfskin heads and you show up and they are wildly out of tune or maybe you show up to a backline kit or a house kit at a studio and the heads are totally shot and you have to figure out how to deal with that because there are no other heads to change them into. How you can adapt 
really shows your capacity to generate what your sound is in addition to whatever the drums themselves in a vacuum behave like. When we play, we're going to find ourselves on a spectrum of quality in terms of the space, the instruments, whatever they're doing that day. If we're at home, if we are in our practice space, if we are at our own gear, that's the time to start to experiment with how close you can get to a sound that's in your head with the instruments you have, but realizing that the vast majority of what you're drawing out has to do with your physical connection to the kit and not so much whether or not you have one ply or two ply batter heads or whether or not you have the same ride symbol as your favorite drummer. This means that the more experimentation we do in that context, the more adaptable we're gonna be when we run into tricky situations. And it could be something as simple as realizing at the gig that you forgot one of your rack toms at home or something like that. If you're used to three, can you adapt to two, even if they're yours and they sound like you're expecting? That can really throw you off. If, if I have a third one, that's really challenging for me to adapt to because I never play with a third one. And that's something that I could work on. We really shy away from a lot of black and white comparisons here because everything is on a spectrum at the end of the day. But in this case, we want to talk about a specific spectrum, and that is, on one end, the sort of player that tunes everything the same all the time, likes to use their symbols, and shows up to a gig or session or whatever it might be, and says, this is the sound that I make. Here, I'm going to make that sound. On the other end of the spectrum is the ultra versatile player who adapts to any situation, doesn't really bring a specific kind of sound to any specific situation, but instead says, I am a universal puzzle piece. I'm going to figure out what fits in here and I will adapt, 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 almost to the point of not having a personality in their playing. Somewhere on the spectrum are all of us somewhere on there. Over the course of playing, career, personal, whatever, we're gonna move around on that spectrum. But there's a lot of space between those two extremes. And on the one hand, we wanna be versatile. We wanna have options. We wanna be able to generate a few different feelings and experiences on the kit. But we also wanna have a personality so that we are recognized as an individual who is contributing something that is unique to us as an artist. There are also people for whom it's just a job and they're on that spectrum too, but Hopefully we're still enjoying playing the instrument and it still gives us some joy, but you'll meet those people along the way too. On this spectrum is where we start to discover how our influences change what we think of as our sound. It's important for us not to carbon copy our favorite drummers and turn into clones of them in our professional or playing lives or wherever it lives for you in terms of playing drums, but we can't evolve without external information and influence, otherwise we will stay the same forever and ever, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it feels like an awfully narrow lane when you consider the possibilities of the instrument. This means that if I love Elvin Jones, it doesn't mean I need to play exactly like him every day, but I do love to reference that kind of accent or that kind of idea. I also love everything on every Primus record. so. The intersection of all of those things can give me a personal style that is not exactly any of them, but a little bit of all of them. And this leads us to the biggest thing that we want to say today, and that is this. If there's a genre of music that you are completely turned off to, we all have them, I invite you to look around the people you know, musicians you know, even utilize the internet, find someone who loves the genre that is completely closed off to you and ask them to help you see why they love it. Because if you completely shut yourself off, you're gonna miss out on little facets of that that you could incorporate into your playing, into your listening, into your writing, whatever it is that you do. 
I've done this a few times in my life where I just realized that I wanted to be open to things that I wasn't finding myself naturally open to. And there's no reason not to give it a look. And if you reach out to friends, if you reach out to musicians you know who love that corner of the musical world, they can show you something that might have a little more Venn diagram crossover for you with things you already love. And you can do that for them likely too, which is a great way, again, to also grow community, to grow connection, and to expand and our influences and thus our own sound. What do we do with all of that once we have it? Experimentation, trying things out, exploring uncomfortable scenarios on the kit, tuning the snare different than you normally do, maybe heads that you're not used to, maybe something as simple as a different pair of sticks, something as simple as listening to some music first that you don't normally listen to, try experimenting with the sounds on there, emulating things that you hear. It's just about expansion. And the more that we experiment, the more options we're gonna have, we'll grow the toolkit, and our personal sound can thus get honed in and get clearer for us so that we can say what we want on the kit. We've come to the point where we need to address an elephant in the room, a pretty big one, and it is that the industry at large that makes all of these instruments that we use, all the gear, all of it, they are always hoping to sell us on the idea, sell us, on the idea that they can provide us with our sound, that we're purchasing our sound from them, and then we will be satisfied and we will be happy to play whatever it is that we purchased. The struggle here is that It's another wherever you go, there you are scenario. If I buy a different set of drums, if I buy a different cymbal, that instrument might sound different, but I'm still gonna sound just like me. I can't purchase someone else's sound through purchasing. The only way to get that is to figure out my needs internally and develop my sound so that I can play a lot of gear and realize that my sound is not this cymbal, but I can get my sound out of this cymbal. So it starts here, and eventually we can hone in on our sound internally so that we can select the right gear to facilitate the sound that we're looking for. We get asked a lot about the gear that we have here, not just what ride symbol is that, but what are our tune bot settings on the rack tom on episode 35 or something like that. Seemingly with the notion that that's gonna then take this sound, hand it to another person, and then they're gonna have that sound. And the fact of the matter is, it just doesn't work that way. The sound that this drum makes is dependent on a million factors that have nothing to do with the tension on the drum or even what drum it is. Never mind the sticks that I'm using or what I had for breakfast that day. This all circles around to the fact that we are making that sound and having knowledge around maybe how tight that head is could give you some insight into how I feel when I'm hitting it. But it's not a thing that you can just give to somebody. And I spent time tuning these drums today because I wanted them to feel like me. I wanted them to feel and sound and give me what I was looking for to just play some stuff that is actually what I play in my working life. And if I give you this drum to play, if you sat here and played these drums today, you'd sound like you on these drums. This is why we don't spend a lot of time playing really flashy stuff on this channel because there's plenty of that out there and to be totally honest, I'm a working drummer, I make records, I play shows, that's where the vast majority of my income comes from and what you're hearing today is what I play on gigs. Frankly, what you hear in most of these episodes is what me, who does this for a living, plays on the drums. So. There's no reason for there to be a lot of linear wildness or blast beats or other things like that in this, not because those are invalid, but because those are not my wheelhouse and there are not things that I get called to do in order to make money and in order to grow my career. This means that 
Whether or not those are technical blind spots for me doesn't actually really matter. This is an extension of my job, and my job is to facilitate music, play with bands, make audiences happy, and grow <laughs> grow those things. So when you think about your sound, never forget that there's a context for it. And it might be that you play on Instagram and that's your end game. And that's totally fine too. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Mine is playing in bands with people live in front of audiences. That's how I ended up with my sound. That's why I tuned these sounds. That's why we picked these symbols. And that's why we play here the way we do. In the end, the only thing that matters here is experience. You can't buy it, you can't grow it, you can't get it anywhere else than just doing it. So get out there and get yourself this experience because that's the only way to get your own sound. There's nothing else to say about that.